Okay. And I want to get into uh, some aspects of putting, assembling, uh, assembling ideas. How the brain selects, again, from a wide variety of things, um, how a decision is forced from a wide variety of events. And uh, it works on the principle, getting back to the old principle of the apple tree or the cherry tree that I talked about. I mentioned that a person would have to have information that runs a broad scale. Now, a person with just a few bits of information has a simple decision-making system. And the simplest decision-making system is yes or no. And computers work on that basis. And uh, the early computers, on and on. And yes and no was a game people used to play years ago. Do you live more than 10 blocks? Remember that? Yes. <laughs> and, and you go on, no. And, and they pretty much they pinpoint the situation. Do you like apples? No. And then, yes, no. And then they come down to the kind of food you like. It's kind of a long, drawn-out process to arrive at something. So a simple person here, between good and evil, the decisions don't have shades of gray in it. Even the religious system doesn't have a, a person that rides between good and evil. They don't talk of percentages. You see, <coughs> the essential line. The religious people want people to be good. And good uh, would have to do with uh, being godlike, and good would have to do with the intent of the person, not what they seemingly do. If you go out with a minister and you help people and you carry the bags and all that, he says, you're a very good person. But when you're not with a minister, you may not do those things. So it's pretty hard to tell whether the person is good or bad, even in the minister's terms, if you follow that. All right. And if a person makes fast decisions, I'll show you how a person makes fast decisions. This is a brand new Rolls Royce. And you look at it and the guy wants to sell it for 20 bucks. Well, people make a fast decision. Because the, the di direction is obvious in relation to all the other events that they know about. They can sell it, they can do whatever they can do with it. I also mentioned in the past, during World War II, in the South Pacific, I don't know why they did this, but they brought some sewing machines there for the natives. And they showed them how to use it, and they had power trucks and all that. And after the armies left, some people came back about 10, 15 years later, and they didn't see any sewing machines. They used them for anchors. <laughs> because they didn't have any power. And they weren't foot-operated. At least if they were foot-operated, it'd be pretty good. So there you run into a problem of use, putting a thing to use. What good is an electric bulb? What good is an electric bulb if you don't have any power? Well, did you ever, you ever I guess you didn't, because in the early days, all, all electric bulbs had a little foot sticking out like that. Does anybody here ever see one of those? Hi, how are you? Do you remember the early lamps? Anybody here? Yeah. She's all these young people. You never saw them, Joe? No. No, Edison's lamp's got that thing. Yeah. The original lamp has got that tip on it. Yeah. We, no, the they've been bulb. like that for many, many years. When they manufactured the bulb, they pulled it off like that. There's a little curlicue here, like the Rupert Tear. Then you stuck it under water and broke that yeah. tip off. Uh, I did that. And it filled with water completely. Nobody's ever done that here. Just yeah. you. Yeah. All right. They show you how young everybody is. Okay. And then you use it for a barometer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you remember that? Yeah. And there uh, were oh, just a lot of different things people used to do with that. All right, here's your decision-making system. Like I said before, good and evil, according to religious people, and then the center line here, they say, well, that's where people are. They're somewhere between that. And that isn't true. On Wednesday, they're over here. And then on Thursday, they may shift back over to that point. And then Friday, they go to confession, and they're back over to this point. And so all between good and evil, which is ridiculous, because on the day you die, if you're evil, you go to hell. And if you're good, on the day you die, you go to heaven. Now, when, when is the judgment made? Over a period of time? And it seems to me that any person with religious training is good and evil, equally. Evil meaning against the patterns established. And if it's even, then the score is zero. 
You don't go to heaven or hell. You go to limbo. That's between systems. All right, in our system here, we don't use the term good and evil. We use the term, is the, is the process more effective than the earlier process? Is the system better than the earlier system? Does it take less effort to operate? Okay, if you work as a systems person, meaning working with mechanical things, you can reduce a process considerably, the complication of the process. Behaviorally, you can. Does anybody know why? In technology, you can. I can make a sewing machine work very smooth and very fast <coughs> up to the point that a sewing machine can work. After that, in other words, if a sewing machine does a certain job, if the needle moves up and down at a certain rate, if you have a rotary spot welder on the sewing machine, seam welder, it'll weld as fast as that thing can rotate. But if you have a, a series of pulsating laser beams that weld, you can weld 90 miles an hour. Do you think you know what I mean? If you just scan it with a laser beam, you can weld the joint without moving the fabric. In other words, if you had uh, a skirt on some kind of a mandrel or a mannequin, and you wanted to seam it right here, you do it with a laser beam, right down, faster than you can, say, jackrabbit, you know, simply. Now, the idea of decision-making, the reason that it takes time, the decision, because the, the wiring in the human body is, uh, like I said before, information moves through the body with the speed of light. But what they call consciousness moves with the speed of a roach. Because even though your brain signals move very, very fast, they would be moving so fast, you wouldn't know what the hell you were thinking about. If, if it really, so you slow it up. In, re, in the real world, we slow things up. And we slow it up so badly that if you say to a person, what do you want to do today? And the person looks around, hems and haws, and says all kinds of things, and tries to package what they'd like to do so you might do it for them. <laughs> a child, if you say, what do you want to do? He said, whatever I want to do. And he said, what would that take? He said, it would take enormous sums of money. <laughs> and so he said, well, we're not going to do that. Then why do you ask me what I want to do? Tell me what you permit me to do today. Well, this is the way people, if people say, what would you like to do today? And first they just hang all day from a platform. Well, first of all, I'm not going to do that. We're not really concerned with what people would like to do. It would be very difficult to come into a situation where there are people and you want to begin to make contact with the other person. This is what they're trying to do all the time. Make contact with the other person for a purpose. Isn't that awful? There's no contact made with another person unless there's a purpose. Pardon me, sir. Yes. How do you get the fifth in Maine? So, any contact you make has a purpose. Only normal people have lost that. They don't know that they make contact with purpose. Or they don't want to believe it. They say, well, they just, just make contact to be friendly. That's the purpose. But there's no such thing as contact without purpose. You pick something up because you're curious or you have need for it, but there's nobody... Sometimes a person will pick it up because it's there. Because what some people call surplus energy or hyperactive. Kids certainly will touch or pick up things, but children brought up in a ball don't pick up anything or touch anything once they've touched the surface of the ball and they find it to be fairly uniform, they may lean against it. Their curiosity is diminished to zero in a gray ball. But if the ball has no lighting in it, then they go back into themselves. Do you know what that means? If you put in a gray ball and fed, you go back into your, you dwell in here. The stimulus comes from the inside out. And that's what a dream is, when you don't have any external stimulus. A dream is the automatic traveling of the circuitry to wherever the hell the potential is. Sometimes this flares up and the signal goes there. Then something else flares up. Now here's what that means. You've got a pail 